The Amazon EFS Utils Package is an open source collection of Amazon EFS tools, also known as the EFS Client. You can find it here at AWS EFS Utils on github.com. EFS Client enables the ability to use Amazon CloudWatch to monitor an EFS file system mount status. You need to install Amazon EFS Client on the EC2 instance prior to mounting an EFS file system. It includes the Amazon EFS Mount Helper, which makes it easier to mount EFS file systems. Uh, mount Helper is a program that you use when you uh, when is used when you mount a specific type of file system. And so there was a whole different way of doing this before. And so now this is a much easier way to mount. Uh, this is the way you'd install it on Amazon Linux 2. The docs seem to be really focused on Amazon Linux 2, not so much on 2023. So when we do the lab, we'll obviously use the latest and see what we run into. EFS Mount Helper provides the following options. It has mounting on supported EC2 instances, mounting with IAM authorization, mounting with Amazon EFS access points, mounting with on-premise Linux client, auto-mounting EFS file systems when an EC2 instance reboots, mounting a file system when creating an EC2 instance, can mount either Linux or Mac. So it's super robust. There's no reason not to use the EFS mount helper part of EFS client. Amazon EFS does not support mounting from Amazon EC2 window instances. Before EFS mount helper, standard Linux NFS client was recommended for mounting. That's how you had to do it. Um, mount helper defines a new network file uh, system type called EFS, which is fully compatible with the standard mount mount command in Linux. Mount helper also supports automating mounting as uh, an EFS at the instance boot via etc. fstab configuration. Net dev option uh, is used to identify the NFS when mounting your file system automatically if emitted EC2 might stop responding. So that is a configuration you might care about. Here's how you would mount it. So I'm just gonna get my pen tool so we can get a little bit closer here to see what we're doing. So here we're saying EFS, we're using TLS, and then we're providing either the file system DNS name here, the file system ID, which I believe is this, and the mount target IP address, which is this. There's a variant of this in the docs, but this is pretty much it. And this actually is for mounting multiple IP addresses, so there's one where, anyway, this is the one that you should use. EFS Management Console will provide the code via the attach button, so you don't have to figure this stuff out. They make it pretty easy for you. Um, EFS Mount Helper will uh, will use the following mount options. So we have version 4.1, use when mounting for EC2 Linux. 4.0, when you are mounting to supported Mac instances. The R size is whatever that number is. That's the maximum number of bytes. Okay. We have the W size. We have hard. So set the recovery behavior at NFS client after an NFS request times out. So the NFS requests are retried indefinitely. We have the timeout, set the timeout value of NFS client used to wait for response before it retries. This is set to 60 seconds. It has two numbers of uh, times that it will retry a request before it attempts to recover. We have no res port. So it tells the NFS client to use a non-privileged uh, TCP uh, source pro, uh, port when a network connection is reestablished. We have mount port at 204 uh, 2049 for Mac instances. Uh, I didn't mean to go to the next slide, but there you go. Okay, ciao.